All right, we've reached the end of the week. It is Friday, and it's weather for Weather Geeks time. Boy, it is cold outside, but it's not going to be for much longer. We're going to uh, cover the weekend in this video. We'll talk about uh, next week a little bit as well, and then we'll focus a little bit on the month of March as a whole, which, hard to believe, gets underway on Sunday. Of course, tomorrow is Leap Day, an extra day this year in the month of February. Well, well, wind speeds and wind gusts were not as high today as they were yesterday. It was still no fun to be outside with wind chills in the single digits and lower teens this afternoon and into this evening, and we can expect similar wind chills throughout the course of the night tonight. As far as today's numbers go, 19 the low this morning, 25 was the high this afternoon at 4 p.m. We did not have any measurable snow at the Youngstown Warren Airport today, trace amounts with some flurries. Boy, uh, in recent years, late February has been a very... Uh, impactful and important time of the year as far as records go. We've had a lot of record highs and record lows in the last five or six years. Two years ago, 63 on today's date, and then five years ago, it was nine below zero during that brutal February of 2015. All right, just some conversational flurries for the most part today. We still have a couple of random flakes out there this evening. This is all going according to plan, but I think also according to plan, things are going to get a little bit busier as we head through the overnight tonight and a disturbance comes at us from the north. That disturbance is what's responsible for this just Mondo lake effect band that actually originates way up here over Lake Superior, picks up a little bit of moisture over the northern tip of Lake Michigan, then over Lake Huron, goes all the way across through Toronto, picks up more moisture over Lake Ontario, and deposits it in upstate New York where they are measuring the snow in feet in places such as Watertown, New York, and other places uh, just downwind of Lake Ontario in northern New York. Also, some pretty good lake effect bands in southwest New York, uh, just south of Buffalo and south of Rochester, down closer to the uh, uh, western end of the Finger Lakes uh, this evening. And as this disturbance starts pivoting to the uh, south, I'm expecting a, an increase in the snow shower activity locally as we go through the overnight tonight. We're not going to see anything like they're having in New York, but I think especially from I-80 on north, we'll see a noticeable increase in the flurries and snow showers as we head towards midnight and beyond. Of course, they'll be more frequent as you get up to I-90, but again, even as far south as I-80, I'm expecting a frequent dose of snow showers overnight. Flurries will probably linger in some places into tomorrow morning, and maybe even some fresh uh, accumulations of snow still occurring, uh, especially Mercer County by mid-morning tomorrow. Now again, up towards I-90, still a handful of inches of snow yet to go, and up towards Meadville and Crawford County, up towards Erie, and into southwest New York. This will be a no fun night for traveling on I-90, 79, and 86. Here in our television viewing area, you know, this is going to be just random coatings here and there tonight, but especially once you get north of I-80 and up north of 82, and closer to uh, Gustavus and Kinsman and Greenville, etc., etc., yeah, two or three inches can be a possibility tonight into tomorrow morning. If you're watching from Columbiana County, this is no big whoop at all. Pretty much just some flurries into the start of Saturday. Now, it's going to be an overcast midday period on Saturday, but notice it's turning fairly sunny in western Ohio by midday Saturday. I think some of that uh, broken cloud deck will try to filter in before the sun sets Saturday evening. Don't forget, now sun sets after 6 o'clock, and I do think we'll see some late day sunshine, and it's not going to do us much good. It's still going to be cold outside, but that's a, a preview of things to come on Sunday. I think it's a nice sunny midday period on Sunday, maybe some high clouds in the afternoon, but what a change this is going to be on Sunday. After starting out around 19 or 20, first thing in the morning, those diurnal temperature ranges will be real big across the area on Sunday as we should approach 50 before the day is through. Take advantage of the uh, day Sunday to uh, do anything you want to do outdoors because while it is going to be pretty mild early next week, it's going to come at a, a price. Particularly on Monday, elevated chances for wet weather. Some of these showers can linger into parts of Tuesday, maybe even parts of Wednesday as well. We can forecast 28 tomorrow, 49 on Sunday. Now, the breeze will not be as much of a factor on Saturday. It'll be breezy on Sunday, but at least that'll be a mild breeze as opposed to the frigid winds we've had over the last couple of days. All right, tomorrow is leap day. That means March 1st is uh, Sunday. And that means the start of meteorological or climatological spring, the months of March, April, and May. This, of course, is the season in which our averages, average highs, average lows, rise quickly. And we'll go from an average high of 40 on March 1st. And then by the end of May, 73 is our average high. Doesn't that sound delightful? We're gonna be there in three months as far as the averages go. So picking up a lot of daylight, and of course those averages respond really nicely during the next few months. This was the original March outlook put out about 10 days ago, um, 9, 10 days ago from the 
Climate Prediction Center, part of the National Weather Service, and I think there's going to be a big revision to this initial forecast when they put out their final March outlook, uh, probably tomorrow, if not tomorrow, then Sunday. Uh, I think you're going to see this these light shades of blue replaced by orange across the eastern U.S. We're reverting back to the same pattern that we've been in for the last few months, and that means... Warmer than average temperatures, I think, are going to be favored in the month of March. Now, this kind of bucks the trend in recent Marches. March has been our most consistently cool month compared to average out of any month of the year over the last handful of years, since the middle of last decade. Six of the last seven have been cooler than average. Uh, March 2020 probably, again, bucks that trend. I'm expecting a warmer than average month. Lower confidence on the precipitation compared to average, but if I were a betting man, I would hedge a little more towards uh, being on the wet side crazy wet no does i don't see any information suggesting that at this point but i would place uh money on it being at least a little bit wetter than average even though my confidence on that is still lower than the temperature i'm pretty confident that the temperatures are going to end up being warmer than average yet again in march of 2020 thanks for checking out uh, the friday evening edition of weather for weather geeks make sure you're following our weekend warriors on social media that would be chris serenelli and ramel carpenter I'll see you back here on Monday, the second day of March, for a fresh edition of the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. Have a great weekend.